It's a beautiful day today and we're reading about some more entitled people. We read about some entitled Karens yesterday and that was so fun. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. But today we're reading about some more entitled people which is pretty much the same. And let's get into it. Enjoy guys. I got called a creep for ordering the same food as an entitled woman. I, 27 male, and my wife, 30 female, were running a couple of errands on my day off. And as is customary being humans that are alive and possessing a functioning stomach, we got hungry. I took a quick detour to a well-known Chinese food chain because I was in the mood for some orange chicken. My wife stayed in the car while I ran in to grab the food. There weren't very many people inside and I was like, sweet, I should be in and out of here pretty quick. Little did I know that one of the three people standing in front of me was a Karen. There was a couple in front of me that looked like they were in their early 20s. 20s, and a man ahead of them who looked like he was in his late 20s. The girl was reasonably attractive and dressed in pajamas. Definitely not the kind of look you'd normally see with a Karen, which is why I was so thrown off by what she said to me. The two guys ordered their food without incident. Now, when the girl orders her food, I know that she happens to be ordering the exact same thing that I want to order. Crazy, I know. When the staff member asked me what I want, I order the same. The girl hearing what I ordered looks back at me with the most disgusted look on her face and says, I have a boyfriend, you creep. <laughs> What? Because what? That means you're interested in them because you ordered the same food? Delusional. Are you trying to get with me or something? Before I can even get a word in edgewise, she walks off in a half to join her boyfriend at the till. She continues to glare at me once or twice while her boyfriend rolls his eyes and finishes paying. Both me and the staff member look at each other thinking, did she really just say that? Then the nice middle-aged Chinese woman serving me says to me, I'll give you a little extra chicken. I turn back to her and say, thanks, my wife will really appreciate that. Can I get an order of of orange chicken too for myself. OP, that is so wild. I don't know what that really says about a person, that if somebody else orders the same food as them, they think that they're interested in them. I don't know, but it's definitely not good. Like, get over yourself. Oh my God. And it's one of those situations where you don't even know what to say. Like, how the hell do you even respond to that? Besides completely ignoring them and not saying a word and pretending they don't even exist, I feel like that's the right move. But besides that, what would you even say? That's hilarious. The next one, is called Friends Dad Keeps Opening My Packages. I, male 19, have been living with my friend's parents for almost a year now and I pay rent for my own room. But lately I've been getting more and more pissed by the fact that my friend's dad is always prying on my privacy. For starters, he wanted access to my bank account so that he could help me with spending habits, to which I immediately said no, because it's my money and he's not my dad. And plus, he controls my friend's spending and I don't want that. He also really likes opening my packages for whatever reason. Oh, this is so annoying. And if no, it's never anything bad, usually just collectibles or figures. I'm getting really sick of the fact that I always come home and find my packages on my bed opened. Just yesterday, I'd come home from some military training and I was super excited to open and set up a cyberpunk edge runner's light on my wall, only to find that it was yet again open and completely missing the wall mount. And I asked him politely if he'd opened my package, but as per usual, he lied and denied it. Even though I get photos from the delivery driver and it was clearly him, later that night, I found the little bag of wall mounts in the trash. I don't really know what to do at this point. Just kind of felt like venting. Yeah, so you can definitely get a PO box or something and also move out of there ASAP. There are some people that you straight up can't live with and I feel like this person is getting very close to that. The audacity that they feel like they can go through your stuff and obviously they don't want you putting holes in the walls or something, but they can tell you that. They don't need to check all of your mail. But yeah, like this comment says, if you can't afford to move out, then get a PO box and have your mail delivered there. He's overstepping and treating you like a child instead of a renter. The next one is an update to a post that we've read in the past called I26 female kicked my soon to be ex friend 25 female out of my house and I'll play that post now so it's not too confusing and if you guys have already read it you can skip to this part here. The next one is called I26 female kicked my soon to be ex friend 25 female out of my house. As the title says last week I kicked what I thought was a good friend out of my house because I can no longer handle her antics. Just want to write it here just to de-stress and deal with the grief of losing a friend. Kendall, 25 female and I met in university in 2016. We studied different majors but we're from the same department so we share many different classes together and we bonded over our passion for gaming and memes. Upon graduation, Kendall moved back to her hometown due to COVID and found a job there. We kept in touch online through Instagram. About three years later, Kendall told me she found a better paying job in the city so she's planning to move out from her parents' place. When I asked her about her plans on her accommodation, she replied with, that's the thing, I was going to ask you if you have an extra bedroom that I could 
move into. For context, I've inherited an apartment from my late grandfather, which is a nice three bedroom, two bathroom near the city center. And that was last January. And I currently live alone there since it's closer to my workplace and it has all the convenience of public transport. After some thinking, I thought there was no harm in living with Kendall. Since I considered us as close as friends, we discussed the terms and of course the rent. A week later, Kendall moved into my apartment. It was great at first, my home felt more lively than usual and the thought of going home to a close friend did warm my heart and gave me a sense of security. Things were okay for a while and then crap went downhill super quick. Kendall started complaining about many things at home, about her work, her savings and how she feels homesick. At first I was very accommodating, thinking maybe she just needs time to get used to the city life. I offered as much help as I can, even to the point that if she's low on money I don't mind voiding a month's rent if it meant I could help her to achieve financial stability. I told her how I save money, how I live off my then low salary, with several commitments like my car, my dog and a student loan. I grew up where my parents expect me to be independent, so I told her things I'd do when I'm low on cash, how to get freelance jobs etc. But she always seemed to have excuses for every suggestion I have. Finding a freelance job is too hard, or how she couldn't let go of her premium junk food that she isn't willing to cook or meal prep. And I eventually decided to leave it as it is, and after two months of living together, I realized Kendall started treating me as some kind of competition. She would constantly ask me things like how much money I make a month, how many job hoppings did that take, anything that she thinks she's better than me she'll definitely pop that question. She boasts about how she's loyal to her crappy paying company and how I'd never be able to move up the corporate ladder as she called me an industry frog. She once snooped at my savings balance and asked how the hell did I save so much with commitments. Mind you, she didn't have a lot of commitments. Her parents paid off her student loans and fully paid off a brand new car for her and maybe I should stop collecting rent from her. I got mad and I told her that if she isn't happy with me, maybe she should move out. Cue the crocodile tears as she said it was a joke I didn't have to take her seriously and she begged for my forgiveness and promised to never snoop at my personal items and details again. I let it go once but she kept bringing things up like well you have the cash and the credit card. Every time I told her I'd rather stay home because I no longer have the budget to go out and have fun. Comments like these became more frequent when I got a new job six months ago. On top of that she doesn't clean up after herself, tried to flirt with my boyfriend and at times parked in my parking space when our initial agreement was that she has to find her own parking space if she's going to move in with her own car because my apartment only has one parking lot per unit. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I caught her kicking my dog in his abdomen when I got home from work. I yelled at her and I rushed to check my dog. Luckily he was fine but I still rushed him to the vet for safety measures. I got home and she sneered that it was just a dog and as a friend I shouldn't treat her like that. I asked why she'd kicked my dog and she didn't answer me. She shrugged and tried to escape into her room. At this point it was already about a year since Kendall moved in with me. I lost my call and I told her off, bringing up her problems and how I tried to be nice and accommodating. Then I told her I'm giving her a week to move out and from then on I'd rather we keep our relationship casual or we don't ever talk at all. Kendall cried and begged me to not kick her out but soon it turned into her screaming back at me, calling me a bad friend because apparently in her words, I didn't tell her off on how badly she was behaving. Like what the hell? Yeah well, take some responsibility, oh my god. There was a lot of back and forth which I didn't remember what I said but I remember eventually calling her an entitled brat. She cried again saying it was uncalled for and stormed off to her room. The next day I was bombarded from texts from other uni friends, some calling me selfish and others sympathise with me. This part here is what always frustrates me about these sorts of stories. Why are other people giving their opinion? Like stay out of it. Apparently Kendall posted our argument on Facebook and Instagram, painting me to be the bad guy. I was upset at first but I decided that after Kendall moved out we'd no longer be friends, as well as those who took her side of the story and condemned me. Last week Kendall left and I've changed the locks on my apartment. I curled up on my bed and cried myself out, probably from the sadness of losing a friend or maybe I'm finally letting out all the frustrations. I'm definitely still grieving about this loss of a friend and I've had many good times with Kendall. For now I want to focus on myself and hopefully I eventually get over this. Edit the whole teasing that I have more money than Kendall got worse when I told her I was given an offer by an MNC as a senior designer and I told her the offered salary as we always did, like I know how much she earns too, which was about 50% more than hers. That was dumb on my part. I now understand why my parents told me to never disclose or discuss salaries from the moment I started working. Yeah, OP, Kendall is not a good friend. They were treating you awfully and not to mention they were kicking your dog. What? You're in such a better position now that they're gone, OP. Like it's only going to be up from here. And yeah, what sort of an a-hole gets frustrated and kicks somebody else's dog? That's revolting. Update, I kicked my soon-to-be ex-friend out of my house. For those that haven't seen the original post, you may read it here. Hello everyone, I'm here with some updates about me and my doggo as well as my now ex-friend Kendall. Let's start off 
with the update about myself. I've been doing well and surprisingly, as some of you mentioned previously, I'd gotten over the loss of this friendship rather quick. My boyfriend planned a trip to a pet friendly beachfront hotel and I spent a few days with just my boyfriend and doggo. We played in the seawater and I watched my dog play in the sand. Overall had a great time and we even had grilled fish together while watching the sunset. Doggo had a deboned fish fillet. I'm also grateful for my friends who stood by my side regarding the issue. They check in on me from time to time and they sent me funny content to watch during my free time. Some of them even told me their stories about Kendall and their discontentment with her behaviour, which I'll list below. Friend A. Kendall ridiculed friend A several times because friend A earned less than Kendall, despite he's worked a year longer than Kendall. Friend B. Kendall trash talked friend B's company via Instagram just because Kendall flunked her interview with the said company with flying colours. Friend C. Kendall always demanded friend C to be her personal driver during our college days. If friend C refused, Kendall would guilt trip her. Friend D. Ruined friend D's assignment by pranking him. She actually formatted his laptop when the project was due in two weeks. When confronted, all Kendall said was, oopsies. <laughs> oh no, these are so bad. There are many more, but these are the more icky ones I've heard from my friends. And now with all that out of the way, here's today's main cause. After I kicked Kendall out of my house, one of my uni friends, let's call her Anne, stood by Kendall's version of events and has allowed Kendall to move in with her instead. Anne called me out of the blue this afternoon and her first question to me was, how did you manage to put up with Kendall for a year? She's driving me crazy. Long story short, whatever Kendall did when she was living with me, she now does it to Anne. Snooping Anne's personal items, leaving dirty laundry around, generally being a prick in the butt. Anne told me she's planning to force Kendall out of her house too. I didn't comment much since Anne were among those who called me a cruel person, but now it's come back to bite her. But wait, that's not all. According to Anne, Kendall lost her job because she tried to ask for a 100% increment and assaulted her supervisor when the increment request was turned down two weeks ago. She was immediately escorted out of the office building by security and she just texted me 20 minutes ago saying that she needed a favour from me and that she wants a job at my workplace. I replied stating there isn't any vacancy. To be honest, even if there was, I wouldn't hire her. So yeah, I hope this is the last time I'll hear from Kendall and I'll only update if somehow something interesting happens that involves Kendall. Wow, so Anne was calling you a cruel person for how you dealt with Kendall, but now Anne has had to deal with Kendall and realised that Kendall is the issue. Yeah, they sound insufferable OP and for your sake, I hope we don't get any more updates about them. Like we were saying before, there are some people that you can't live with. Kendall definitely seems like one of those people. Story number four is called Karen called the police because I'm going out at weird times and slaps me. I'm referring to this post as if it were happening now, but actually it occurred a few years ago. The title sounds strange, but I really don't know how else to describe it. I was a 16 year old from Serbia and I live in the building next to my grandmother's, but our entrances don't face each other. So if I manage, I'll draw a map. Now our buildings are divided into several buildings. Strange, but each entrance functions like its own building, as if we only share walls. You can't exit one entrance to go to another without leaving the building. Now I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Unfortunately, my grandfather passed away eight years ago, leaving my grandmother alone in her apartment. My parents back then behind my back saw one empty room and asked my grandmother if we could turn it into my private room because I needed privacy. My grandmother was thrilled with the idea. After discussing it with me, we made the room for me. Since I followed my grandmother's rules and I helped her, I didn't spend all my time at her place. Instead, I switched between apartments as needed. For example, I'd come home from school, leave my things and then go to my grandmother's to sleep and then return home in the morning to have breakfast. I had a sort of routine for when I went there with an accuracy of plus or minus an hour. Now again, I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Directly in front of my entrance is another entrance and above it at the window 70% of the time when I went out, there was an elderly woman. She always looked at me somewhat grumpily as I passed by. Sometimes I glanced at it, but I had headphones on and often wore a hoodie, so I ignored her. When I had the second shift, I usually got home around 8.20 and then I went to my grandmother's around 10.30, of course, with exceptions. That woman was almost always there, but it didn't bother me because why would it? I saw her for like 20 seconds a day. Once when I was leaving my house to go to my grandmother's without headphones or a hoodie, she finally said something. Karen, you're going to get high again. Me, huh? Karen, every day you go out with a hoodie over your head in the dead of night. It was 10.30 then. I can clearly see what you're doing. Me, what am I doing? Karen, dealing drugs. What's in that backpack? Wow, that's unbelievable. Me, that's none of your business. Just a laptop and equipment. Karen, I think it's drugs. Open it and let me see. Me, I felt like telling her that the only thing I would open for her is a punch in the face, but I said leave me alone and I walked away. The next day she was waiting for me outside the entrance. Karen, what's in that bag? Me, you're a psycho. Karen, if you don't tell me, I'll call the police. Me, call who 
whoever you want. I'm out of here. I left while she was yelling at me. The next day, two police officers were waiting for me outside the door with Karen. Karen, that's him. He's the local dealer. Me. What's going on? We'll refer to the police officers as P1 and P2. P1. We received a report that drug trafficking is happening here. Me looking at him. Is this for real? P2. As absurd as it may seem, we have to check it out. Me. Can you search me and let me go then? P1. We'll search you, but we won't let you go immediately because the lady said she saw you dealing. Me. That woman is crazy, but do what you have to do. I just want to get this over with. P1 was searching me while Karen was yelling about me being a dealer. P2. How old are you? Me. 16. P2. Do you have an ID? Me. I literally went to the building next door. I don't even have a wallet. Can I go to my apartment to get it? I'll leave my backpack with the laptop as collateral that I'll return. P1. You live here? Me. Yeah. P1. I'll accompany you to the apartment, but I won't enter. Me. Okay. When I returned to the apartment, my parents asked me what I'd forgotten. I said, can I get my wallet? My ID is inside. I want to buy a juice. By the way, I really wanted to buy a juice later. I returned to the police officer and my parents hadn't noticed anything yet. Not yet. We returned outside and I showed my ID, which was valid. P2. There's nothing in the backpack. The kid didn't cause any trouble. And let's be real. Just look at him. Karen. I know he has drugs. I saw him. Me. Where? At this point, Karen made a mistake, pointing to the place under the cameras. Me. When? Karen. She said the exact date. Me. Great. We can check the cameras. Realizing that her plan backfired, Karen did the only sensible thing. She slapped me. P1 handcuffed her and put it in the car while Karen was screaming. A small detail about me. I have a lot, a lot of pimples. I know one person who has approximately as many pimples as I do, and that's it. When you slapped me, it bled because I barely felt the slap, which made it look a lot worse than it actually was. P1 went to inform my parents. They came out and my mum wiped away the blood while my dad talked to the police. He asked the officer if he could send me to wash up, and P1 sent me. Karen got convicted of assaulting a minor and misusing the police. Since we managed to hush up the whole story from the neighbours by some miracle, no one saw anything. Karen received a punishment and a stern warning. I was late for playing with my friends, which cost me a good heist in GTA. Edit, she wasn't in jail, but she got a good enough warning that she didn't say anything to me since then. But she's still in her usual spot next to the window glaring. Oh, that's awful. I'm glad you've got a good attitude about this, OP. Because that was so awful that they did that to you. Ugh. And for absolutely no reason, too. Ugh, that sucks. And yeah, now they're just gonna look angry at you from the window. And they still have no reason to be angry at you. Story number five is called, Can We Have Your Seat? First time poster. I've shared this story elsewhere, but since I've finally found a sub dedicated to fools like these that I'm about to mention, I figured I'd share it here. So here it goes. It was 2019, Valentine's Day, which happened to be on a Thursday. I just gotten off work and I went to a particular chicken place chain in the South that is known for their very famous chicken sauce. And while I usually stop here every Saturday night, I was feeling peachy and I decided to treat myself for that evening. When I arrived, it was unexpectedly busy. And funny enough, I was the only single person eating alone that night. I lived 30 minutes away from where I used to work. So I got my boneless wings and I sat down to eat. About five minutes in, a young couple, maybe late teens or early 20s came in, got their order and started looking for a seat. I take occasional glances away from my phone, but I don't think anything of it. When I noticed them approach me from the corner of my eye, coming within two to three feet of me, and the interaction goes like this, boyfriend, girlfriend, and me. Boyfriend, hey, are you about done, please? We need a place to eat. There's nowhere else to sit. I'm a little taken aback by this, as I've been sitting for almost five minutes as well. Me, I'm not even halfway through. Sorry, man. Why not take it home? Boyfriend, stares at me. No one else is almost finished eating, and I and my girlfriend want to sit and eat here, not take it home. Any chance of me getting a to-go box and taking it home just went out the door. Me, sorry, but I'm not getting up. His face gets as red as a beet. Girlfriend, let's take it home. Since this a-hole doesn't have the decency to be nice and give it up. Oh my god, how dare you? Thank you for ruining our night. If that's all it took to ruin your night, you're not having a very good night. That's hilarious. I now stare at her. They go up, talk to the manager who I was very cool with, and they knew who I was because I come in regularly, and they left hastily out the door. As I finish 10 minutes later and I get to leave, I see him and we both exchange glances, and we both snicker at each other, and with that I leave to go home. Still remains one of my most bizarre encounters with the public. The entitlement of some folk never ceases to amaze me. It's so unbelievably frustrating when people do stuff like this and they think that you're in the wrong and they don't even see that they're acting like absolute entitled brats. Yeah, I'm sorry you had to deal with that OP. Like this comment says, doesn't have the decency to be nice and give it up. I laughed so hard at this that my girlfriend stared at me like I'm crazy. If anybody said that, I would have replied, sorry that your sorry ass boyfriend didn't have the decency and time to make actual reservations so that you guys can eat. There's a McDonald's down the road, should be empty. Yeah, for real, how is any of that OP? 
OP being an a-hole. Some people are so confusing. Okay, last one for today. Cousin becomes unhinged when I make an innocent comment about my mother. My cousin has the habit of going on very offensive, insulting rants. I'm going to share a few with you. Christmas of 2016, I'd come home. My mother, who had been in a wheelchair for the last 20 years, had had to move into long-term care that fall. My cousin was driving me to her place for drinks when I made the mistake of saying, very casually, isn't it a shame that there isn't a residence where each person has their own apartment, but there are a few aides on staff, so you can book a time for an aide to help you get up if you need that, and same for going to bed. She literally leaned across the front seat and screamed at me, well, that doesn't exist. I said, no, I know. <laughs> I was just saying that it's a shame that it doesn't exist, and she screamed, well, it doesn't exist anywhere. I made the mistake of saying, I think it exists in Ontario. She screamed, Your mother isn't moving down. Oh my God, what is going on? No matter what I said, she would just lean across and scream at me. When we got to her place, she screamed, And if you're still angry, projection, she was angry. I was in shock. Don't even think of putting a foot out of this car. I'll turn around and drive you home. At that point, I just said, Sure, drive me home. So she started to drive me home. Then at one point, she pulled over and gave me a hug and said, Crying, we shouldn't fight. And I hugged her back, but I wasn't crying. Anyway, we did have those drinks, but what an uncomfortable evening. What did we just read? That has to be the last one for today because we need to read something wholesome after that. And I also don't feel like it's an entitled sort of issue. Like they're completely unhinged OP. And also there are so many people in the comments saying that there are places like that, that they were describing. And you're screaming at somebody while you're driving a car. They sound dangerous. And that's enough for today. Let's read something wholesome. What cows see when I drive past them. See, this is so much better. Funny, cute, wholesome, harmless, absolutely not terrifying. When the person in front of you says you only have a couple of items and lets you skip ahead in the grocery line, thank you. Yeah, 100%. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. It's so beautiful when people do that. A deer wandered in front of my yard. It stopped to watch my neighbor's little dog. My cat stopped to watch the deer. I stopped to watch my cat. And now we're watching all of you. That's awesome. So we're kind of all looking at the little dog. Must have been a pretty cute dog. Just just need sunlight and I'll feel better. No, oh, sun baking little kitty cat. Another one by that doodle guy. And as they always are, that's so cute. And on that note, that's enough for today. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, I'm pretty sure you know what to do. Make sure you like and subscribe and let me know down below. And the comment of the day today goes to Devlin873. Good news, frogs have been known to ride alligators, though it's more common for turtles to do so. Wow, that's so beautiful. It's a real thing. By the way, everybody who's confused, we read a post about frogs riding alligators and it actually happens. I don't know about you guys, but that made my day better. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I'm out of here. Thanks again for all the support, guys. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!